Yeah. Okay. And uh, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, it says this this meeting is being recorded. Okay, I, I yeah. got it. Yeah, and your screen it's still on the on the window mode. It's still on a like. Can you see the presentation? The presentation, yes, but there's uh the Apple, you know, the toolbars. Ah, uh, okay, got it. That. Just bear with me for one second. Yep. Um. <clears throat> And a full screen. Slightly better, but not entirely. Yeah, still could see your uh, tabs open. Okay. Um, do you want to welcome everyone, Erno? And then I'll just try to fix this in a moment. Yeah, are we, are we yep. live? Yep. Yes, yeah, we are, we are okay. live. Yep. Yeah, okay. Good stuff. Hey, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, some technical difficulties, but we'll, uh, we'll get through for sure. Uh, my name is Erno Suomalainen, and I am coming to you live from, from the sunny evening of Helsinki. Uh, I represent one of the international sales offices here in, here in Helsinki, Finland, um, tonight, and I'll be your host. Uh, we have multiple guests also um, rep, uh, presenting tonight, um, but just bear with us a couple of minutes. We'll get the technical, technical things going and uh, get going with the presentation. Yeah, Welcome. excuse me for one second with, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with this document. <clears throat> Here well, we now go. my video is off. Okay, now it's off. There we go. And maybe, um, <clears throat> Erno, you can start with just a little bit of introduction of yourself and Explorius. Sounds good. So yeah, um, like, like I said, I, um, I, I work here in Helsinki. On one of our offices, one of our offices, Explorers offices here in Helsinki, and uh, been been with the company for the past. It's been six years, uh, so quite some time, and and prepared multiple students for their years abroad, um, U.S., Australia, many countries, but mainly the U.S. And also, before I started working for the company, I used to be an exchange student myself. Uh, I I think the year was. Year was 09 and 10, so it's been uh, 12, 12, 13 years uh, since I was an exchange student in the U.S. in Texas. Um, and I think I, because uh, today we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about sports. We're gonna concentrate on sports and and doing sports in high school. Um, I have some personal connection into that because back when I was in Texas uh, as a high school student, I played tennis, and I think one of the one of the reasons. Uh, I went on exchange was to take part in high school sports because especially in the US, you know, sports, uh, school sports, it's a big thing. And I think in my opinion and, and many others as well, it's, it's a much larger thing at the schools uh, than in, in Europe, for example. So it's a, it's a great world. Uh, we get some more info on that uh, later on in the presentation. Okay, okay. So, Erno. looks like should be ready. <laughs> Sorry, but looks like everything's good. Okay, yeah, let's uh, hop on to the to the next slide. Just a moment. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. There we go. So I mentioned uh, Explore Use Finland a couple of times. So our organization structure looks as such that um, we have many country offices. Um, on the left here, you could see our country offices names, A study, Italy, uh, DFSR in Germany, then Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Nordics, uh, called the Explorers offices, Get Ready in Spain, Jev uh, in France, Southern Cross, Ger Germany as well. Um, this is how our um, organization looks. And for example, I'll tell you a little bit more, more of the uh, US, US side of things on the next slide, uh, but we're one big group. So depending on your location and, and your country, uh, you're always welcome to um, connect with our, our local country office uh, on the list here on the left. Next slide, please. This is the uh, agenda for tonight. So just a quick introduction from my side, and then we'll get on to the uh, school presentations 
like I mentioned, we have great visitors tonight. So we'll hop on the dose next. <clears throat> And the school presentations, I will introduce the uh, guests right in the next moment, but uh, we'll be, we have many, uh, many programs that we offer, but select high school program being one of the most larger ones and select high school program will be the one we'll be concentrating on, on today. And what select program actually means is that, um, Let's put it this way: If you're if you're keen on going exchange on exchange, and and you have specific wishes, uh, specific needs for you for your year abroad, could be sports. We're going to concentrate on sports th today. Uh, could be specific uh, specific school courses, specific location, specific city, state, whatever you may have in mind. Um, academic programs, languages, arts. Um, select program would be for you uh, because then we could uh, or you could make the year as 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 you see fit for yourself and your for your future this this way like i mentioned in the beginning for myself uh one of the biggest things why i went on exchange was sports and select high school would be the the right program if you wanted to make sure that uh you could continue your sports on a certain level uh on an appropriate level for you, so select high school uh, would be for you, and this is this is where we concentrate on on tonight. And our visitors uh, tonight are are Dan Bauer from Marblehead Marblehead High School in Massachusetts, Troy Krotz from Pudre. Did I pronounce that right? Pudre High School District in Colorado, and Mackenzie Hanson from Thornton. Academy in Maine. And here you can see the specific schools on the uh, map. And just in a moment, uh, I will hand the mic to, do we have, do we have Dan online? Sorry, I can't see the... Uh... Yes, he's here. Yes. Okay. Very, very good. I'm here. Okay. So further ado, I will hand the mic, uh, mic to you, Dan. And uh, you get to uh, introduce the school to the uh, attendees tonight. Awesome. Well, well thank you for having uh, myself here to represent Marblehead High School. Uh, Marblehead is located right outside of Boston. We are approximately seven miles north of the city. We're on the coastline, beautiful Marblehead, Massachusetts. Our school itself is about 1,000 students. Uh, we are grades 9 through 12, uh, traditional high school. I will say that with this being the tone of athletics, we, we offer um, the full range of athletics for the spring, the fall, and the winter seasons. We have multiple levels of sports, which means we have students that can play sports in their freshman year, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And our participation rate in athletics at our high school is over 70%, which is extremely high. And I would say uh, out of the schools in this area, the highest uh, participation for at least one sport per season. So when, Dan, when we... I'm sorry to interrupt, Dan, do you have your presentation? You could share your screen for everyone. I am more than happy. I wasn't sure if my slides were woven into yours or not. So they are would, not. So we would like you to share your screen with your presentation. That would be would, great. I'm happy to do that. So thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Pull that up. And if it's ready to roll. If I'm ready, able to share the screen, then um, I'm ready to go through that presentation. All right, do I have screen share opportunities? Yep, you should be able to just down at the bottom, there should be like at the bottom of the middle of the Perfect. screen, there should be a share screen button. Perfect. Uh, there you go. There, and you'll let me know if it's not working. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. I would just, you probably want to put it on slideshow. Yep. Beautiful. There Thank you. Looks good. Right. So I, um, as I would talk about Marble at High School, our curriculum is outstanding. We have 18 advanced placement courses. Our rankings are extremely high uh, across the state of Massachusetts and in the Northeast. 96% um, of our students go on to four or two year college. Uh, if not, they go to prep schools. Um, and we also offer many things besides athletics, outstanding performing arts, visual arts, as well as a number of clubs. 
And it's not unusual for our students to be involved in multi-activities, whether it be in athletics and maybe the school musical or the senior art show in another sport. We have an outstanding faculty and very engaged uh, community. So our requirements are the typical um, four years of requirements in science, math, English, and social studies, a two-year language requirement, wellness and PE is built in every year, and then we have a fine arts requirement. So we work with all of our students as they apply uh, to Marwood High School as an exchange. We'll review the transcript to see what classes they need to take in the particular year they're here. So as I said, we have over 18 different advanced placement courses. And we also have another level of honors, college prep and college prep two. The differences between the levels, I would say, would be the pacing of the courses. So if somebody has a specialized interest in a science, they may be more apt to take an advanced placement course um, than they may take another level. So our numbers are 935 to 1000. We have a great ratio to student to teacher, 12 to 1. And as I said, we're 9 to 12. We have school counselors assigned to all of our students, and they will meet with the students when our exchange students come in at the beginning of the year, we have a special orientation where they'll go through their, their schedule, we'll walk through the school, and then also the involvement in all the activities. We do have a great program to help students prepare and move on to college as well. Um, as we say, our school prepares our students to do well when they leave here in terms of writing, collaboration project, time management. We have a senior project that's available to our seniors in the fourth quarter. They can work outside of the school in an internship. And this is open for all of our students. We've had a number of exchange students take advantage of this here at Marblehead High School as well. And again, all of our departments, we are, uh, again, a traditional where we have everything from athletics all the way to world languages. We have a number of unique classes. We have a service learning class, which works within the community. We have a woodworking shop, which is a great opportunity. We have culinary arts, uh, marine tech. Since we're on the coast, it's a great opportunity. We have a chemistry of cooking class for science mindfulness, infectious disease, studio production, where we actually have a studio in our school. And yes, we do have a chess class, which is quite popular. Um, just a few pictures of some of the classes. We have a number of music classes from world drumming to guitar, as you see in the picture here. Um, and our music program is extremely strong. We also have student supports too that meet our students at different levels, whether it's our school counselors, if students need additional support, we have adjustment counselors and psychologists that will help us. If they're struggling in an area of math or English, we have uh, other mechanisms to help our students. So as I said, 96% of our students move on to continue education after college. So we are a college preparatory school. And our college examples uh, vary uh, from small Ivy League to Ivy League to local schools, competitive, and then those across the country. So I think the biggest thing is that we have a great way to be involved. We have over 55 clubs and organizations. We have a club fair that starts every year where students can get around to visit each club that we offer. Uh, student leadership, community service clubs, and our exchange students, they get involved and they are involved in a number of different clubs uh, as they go through our school here. And that's an awesome, awesome place to do that. We had a day of service where we took our grade nine students out into the community to work on various projects. That was a lot of fun. And a layout of our map of the high school. Again, it's a one complex area. We have a huge field house uh, that does have an indoor track. We have an indoor track team, uh, also a hardwood basketball court. We play volleyball in the fall, basketball in the winter, uh, indoor track in the winter. And we have a turf field right adjacent to our high school. So it works well for our soccer programs, football, field hockey, lacrosse, uh, all take advantage of having that in close proximity of the high school. And I do have to mention at the very end, from football standpoint, American football, we were uh, state champs this year. And it was great to play at the uh, Patriots Stadium, though pretty much the whole community came down. We had a half a day of school and most of our students went to the game and it was a lot of fun uh, for all of our students. So with that being said, um, we do have the range of sports, again, 70% participation. The tryouts work for our exchange students as they come in. We start school the day after Labor Day. So we have a window of tryouts and we work in advance as we know our students are coming in. We work with our coaches. So they have an opportunity to try out for the sports when they arrive, even though they might be here a week after sports begin, we give them the leeway to be part of that. And we try to communicate with our coaches and our students over the summer so they feel comfortable 
they're not anxious about missing a few practices because we know it's a, it's a, it's a journey and making the adjustment and coming in, our coaches will work with our student athletes, our exchange students as well. It's certainly easier when you're in a winter sport because you're here and in the spring sport, you're here, uh, but it works out very well uh, for the transition and a good percentage of our exchange students participate in sports. Uh, a lot have been involved with their soccer. We've had a lot involved with our cross country and our track programs, uh, basketball, um, and we've had baseball. Um, you name it, they've participated. And again, we have multiple levels, varsity, JV, and freshman levels. So we have something for everyone. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? We are uh, on the agenda. I've, uh, we put the uh, Q&A session at the end, but we do have some time in between. So any, any quick questions here for Dan, you may have. I, I forgot to mention, we also have a sailing program too, which is unusual since we're on the coast, uh, that's in the spring. Somebody asked if we had a kayaking program. We don't have that, unfortunately, uh, but there are opportunities to kayak around the, uh, the coastal area. Have any of the exchange students uh, took part in the sailing program? I believe we had uh, before yeah. COVID we did, yes. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Very good, so sounds good. Thank you, Dan, again. Uh, next, we have Troy from Pooger High School. Troy, you there? Yes, sir. Are you able to- uh, Yes, I'm here, yeah, I'm uh, working, on, working on sharing now. Very good, sir. Oh, look at that. There we go. All right. So, um, yeah, so welcome. Um, hello, my name is Troy Cross. I'm actually the Assistant Director of Student Outreach for the Pooter School District. So this presentation is not about one particular school. I actually handle all exchange students uh, coming into our district, J1 and F1, for the entire district and place them in school. So um, I'm kind of talking about our district as a whole. So as you see, and as you saw on the map earlier, the uh, Poudre School District is located in Fort Collins, Colorado. That's Northern Colorado. We're pretty much halfway in between Cheyenne, Wyoming and Cowboy Country and Denver, um, the big city of Denver, Colorado. We're kind of halfway in between, um, right along the foothills and viewing the Rocky Mountains. So we're in a great spot to where we've got a lot of, um, a lot of things that we can get to quickly. Some of the area attractions and activities area that I kind of put in here. Um, obviously, during the winter, you've got great skiing in the Rocky Mountains. We have, then again, we also have rodeos, uh, buck and broncos, and riding bulls. You don't have to do that if you're an exchange student, but it's out there. Um, we have where you know, as the the other school close to Boston, we're close to Denver, so we have all the major sports: baseball, um, football, um, basketball, hockey. Um, they're in the finals for the cup uh, coming up here in about a week. Soccer. Activities here, it's all about outdoors when you're here in this area. Um, a lot of hiking, a lot of cycling, uh, fishing, whitewater rafting, uh, tubing during the winter, tubing down the river, camping, a lot of outdoor festivals. So it's just kind of our area. Um, it's, it's just a great place to be when you come in here. Golf, you see our downtown there in the lower left. Um, actually, I've been told that Disney World's Main Street was modeled after our downtown, that we put all those lights into the trees every winter. It's always beautiful to go down there. Um, and of course, we have arts in our community as well. So a little bit about our school district. Um, we are 30,000 students for, uh, for uh, pre-K through 12, 9,000 students in high school. So there are six comprehensive high schools um, that I'll talk about. We have, do have three charter schools and one that we call an expeditionary learning school. Um, there, all 10 of those schools can accept exchange students. Our F1 program is for students ages 14 to 18. Grades nine through 12, um, minimum is uh, 226, but um, it could be something equivalent. We obviously will look at any type of English language score um, coming in um, to show profici uh, proficiency. So as far as our smaller schools, those that are interested in those charter schools and our EL school, um, uh, they don't have uh, two of those, I guess I'd say that you see there, Polaris and Compass do not have athletics. Um, they're excellent schools. They're just different teaching models. Ridgeview Classical and Liberty Common do have some athletics. Um, they are very high level academic, very demanding academic, um, which some students actually want to engage in. 
if you end up going um, to one of these schools and it doesn't have a sport that you're interested in, you actually get to play sports at the your neighborhood comprehensive high school. So going to one of these does not forbid you from playing a certain sport. If you get off the sport, you do it. Like at Liberty Common, you would play baseball for them. But if you were playing football, you would have to do that at your neighborhood school. So if you were there, you do still have all the same opportunities. That's just a, a quick part about those smaller schools. Now, of course, the uh, comprehensive schools, all the bells and whistles, which is what usually people are looking for. Um, this upcoming year, we have six. We actually um, right now only have four, but we have two, Timnath Middle High School and the Eagles, Wellington Eagles Middle High School is opening up in the fall. So we have two brand new schools opening up. Those schools are opening up as six through 10. So they will not have juniors and seniors yet. So this upcoming year, um, you'd have to be a ninth or 10th grader. And then the following year, 11th. And then in two years, they'll have a full high school class. But um, these are our, our uh, comprehensive high schools that basically are, are run the same. Now, numbers wise, um, the Timnath and the Wellington will be a little bit smaller, but our large comprehensive high schools are anywhere from 2,000 to 2,200 students apiece. So very large campuses, um, uh, very large student body. So as far as athletics, uh, each of our comprehensive high schools offers the same opportunity. So basically, regardless of what school you're at, you're going to be able to access all the different sports. There are a few sports, and I'll talk about that in a second, that um, we don't have we don't have the sport at each school. We have a district team, so you still have access to it. So everybody at all the schools has access to all the sports. Uh, some recent successes at these schools, um, individual and team state champions or state runners up in soccer, tennis, volleyball, swimming and diving, baseball, wrestling, track and field. We uh, recently had a young lady out of one of our schools. She now plays for the women's national soccer team. Um, you know, we've had swimmers go to Olympic trials. We've got a couple of players, uh, um, baseball players who are in Major League Baseball. One of them had his debut pitching for the Rockies down in Denver, which was pretty cool. And we've got a couple in the NFL. So there's a, uh, an excellent sports program at all of our schools. Um, very competitive and kind of talk about tryouts and so forth here uh, coming up. So as far as the seasons, we do have, there's three seasons, fall sports you can see there. Um, the ones with the asterisks, those are the ones that are district teams. So we don't have field hockey at all, for, at all the schools. So everybody at those schools play on one team um, in the district. As far as the others, if they don't have an asterisk, then those schools actually have those. So you see what gets played in the fall. If you're coming in in August um, and kind of jumping in, um, football is what, American football is one of the biggest one where, where you're coming in and getting here a couple of weeks before school starts and other people have been doing their summer program. That does not affect your ability to play. We have students who move into our district on the first day of school, you know, from a, a state next door. So that doesn't matter. None of that will stop you from being able to participate in these activities. Um, Winter sports, you see, we have a few more that are, we do have ice hockey and girls wrestling is new. Um, oop, I thought I added the asterisk to Nordic skiing. Nordic skiing is also a, um, a district uh, team. Um, we obviously aren't doing it down here, but you get to go up into the beautiful Rocky Mountains and compete against all those mountain schools. That, uh, it's really nice up there. Aspen, Vail, Beaver Creek, um, some really nice uh, ski resorts up there where they actually compete. So there's our winter sports and our spring sports um, lacrosse and the boys volleyball was added. Again, those are district, but then you see the rest where they're broken up as far as um, the seasons. So again, no matter which school you're at, even if you're in the, one of the small schools, you have access to all of these sports, um, including those district teams. As far as tryouts, fall sports, mid-August, early to mid-August, winter sports, November-ish, spring sports, early to mid-March. Most of the teams will have off-season voluntary conditioning during the school year. It's not mandatory, but they like to have, you know, they'll have open gyms for basketball, track will have uh, voluntary conditioning, things like that. So you can still be involved um, as you work up for those sports. Again, they're not, not required. As far as tryouts are concerned, most of the large teams um, do not have cuts um, just with the schools because there's multiple teams. If you're interested in basketball, you know, um, Poudre High School, which is across the street from me, has four different basketball teams. Um, they will have a varsity, a JV, a C team, and a D team. So um, basically everyone can be involved. The only time we really start to look into cuts is um, the, real, the small teams where you don't, you only have one team. So when it's a golf team or a tennis team, things like that, um, you can't have multiple teams there. And so that's the only time that it kind of gets a little more competitive and that's varies from school to school. But for the most part, there's multiple teams and multiple opportunities to be involved in athletics. Um, as far as the comprehensive school experience, all of our schools um, have robust fine arts departments. So if you are into music, 
concert marching and jazz, singing, drama, visual arts. When we say visual arts, that's everything from painting, drawing, digital arts, pottery. Um, the bigger the school, in which I learned myself, I'm a principal of a small alternative school for at-risk kids as part of my job. Um, and I know that if the, the bigger school gets, the more offerings you have. So when you go to a large comprehensive high school with 2,000, 2,200, there is a lot of different things that you can experience um, um, and access. Uh, also with that experience, you know, we talk about a lot of activities that are big schools and, um, you know, the fall is big around homecoming, homecoming week, homecoming dance. They do a lot of different things. One of our schools has a big bonfire. They all have their different kind of rituals that they do. Um, spirit weeks and assemblies throughout the year, prom. So all these things are going on in the, the large comprehensive schools. Clubs, more clubs than you can basically count. Um, anything and they're run by the school or they're run by students. So if you're a student who has an interest in a club and that club doesn't exist, you can actually go to the administration and get that club going and it meets after school or during lunch and they'll support that. They add them all the time, everything from robotics, French club, anime, chess club, they have things about role playing. I mean, it's just whatever you can think of, they've got it. So um, just to have students you know, active and involved in school all the time. As far as academics, obviously the elective offerings, as I mentioned at the big school, there's a lot um, of things that you can do. And those are academic electives. If you're into journalism, if you're into TV production, if you're into green energy, all these things that aren't required, but this, these things are out there um, for you to take in our comprehensive schools, AP courses in all of our schools in which you can sit for the test, obviously, and get college credit. All of our comprehensive schools uh, offer concurrent enrollment courses. They're taught by our staff on site, but it's also at the same time earning college credit through our local community college, or in some cases through uh, the University of Colorado. So, um, but you don't have to go anywhere else. You're still at the school doing them, but that's a big thing out here. Um, and it may be everywhere. I just know here it's really taken off to where students um, access a lot of college credits just sitting in their high school. And graduation, if you are an F1 student in your fourth year um, and you meet our requirements, you can receive a diploma and graduate with our schools. So um, I know some, you know, don't, aren't seeking to do that, but then others, when they say they're not, then they get here and they find out they're in their fourth year and they only need to take a, you know, many of the credits that come over satisfy our requirements. Usually the biggest things you have to take when you get here is U.S. history and American government, um, and then continue to take your, your other core and can meet those requirements and receive a diploma from the school that you're at. So um, as far as that academic experience, I believe that was it. Thank you very much, Troy. Yeah. Any questions? Rapid fire questions. Running, running quick on the schedule, but that's only only a good thing. I don't know if I talk too fast. Sometimes. No, that was very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, I have I have one question uh, for you, Troy. If say an exchange student uh, wanted to take part in in uh, the fall fall autumn sports and did not make it to the uh, tryouts, is it possible to work? Uh, beforehand with the team contact connection, whatever it may be. Yes, if they arrived after that, they would still be given the opportunity. Like I said, we right. wouldn't be out of that because of their arrival. So. Sounds good. That's good to know. Um, I just want to mention we uh, did get a question from um, uh, from Julie, and she asks if I want to play girls soccer at the highest level at Pooter. Uh, which school would you recommend? That would be Fossil Ridge High School. Okay. Actually, the school who produced a few years ago, and sorry, I turned her name down. She plays for the women's national team and um, that very high level, high level soccer program there. For sure, that would be where you would want to go. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, while I'm interjecting here, I just wanted to add maybe um, the, so Marblehead and Pooter are both public schools. So um, they're schools where students attend on an F1 visa and they live with a host family, which is organized by Educatius Group and managed by Educatius Group. Um, and maybe we can make that a segue to our next school, which is actually a boarding school. So it's not living with a host family, but actually living in a dorm. So unless there are any other um, questions um, oh, Julie did ask, can you write the name of the school in the chat? So which was the name of that school, Troy? Oh, that has the high level girls soccer team? It's uh, Fossil Ridge High School. I'll put that in there now. Super, thank, thank you. you. 
That's great. That's great. Okay, sorry, I'm going to check out now and uh, go back to you, Erno. Thank you very much, Carla. Okay, and thank you again, Troy. Um, next, we have Mackenzie from Thornton Academy in Maine. Mackenzie, uh, the floor is yours, please. Okay, excellent. Um, so can everyone see me and the presentation kind of off to my side here? Yes, ma'am. Working great. Okay, so my name is Mackenzie Hansen, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Thornton Academy. Um, so to begin, we'll look at where is Thornton Academy. Um, so we are in the Northeast, um, about 90 minutes away from Boston. Um, we are in the state of Maine, uh, which is the number one safest state in the U.S. Um, so I think our um, the, one of the number one selling features of Thornton Academy is our location. So, so close to Boston, so you can do everything you want to do. Also in a small city. So from campus, you can walk to restaurants, shops, things like that. Um, you can also walk to the train station that takes you into Boston. Um, so about 15 minutes away from Portland, Maine, which was actually just ranked like the number one or top 10 places to live in the U.S., um, so it's a, trust me, I live there and it's a really great place to be. Um, here's an overview of our campus. So we are a very large school. Um, we're the biggest school in the state of Maine. So we have about 1,600 students. Um, we have about 1,600, or sorry, 1,400 day students and about 180 to 200 boarding students. Um, so we are, we are a boarding school, but we also have homestay. Um, and for us, the price is the same for boarding and homestay. Um, so what you're seeing here is um, you see some of our dorms, you see our turf athletic field over there, you see practice fields in the back of campus. Um, and then around us, you see a lot of trees. And that's where we have a lot of running trails, hiking trails, walking trails, and biking trails as well. So our campus is sort of a mix of old and new. Um, we have old buildings because we're one of the longest standing um, private schools in the US. Um, so we have new dormitories built in like 2010 to 2015. So those, you know, you wanna live in a modern place but then you have the nostalgia of some of our older academic buildings. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here and I'm pretty sure this will work because I tested it I'm gonna show you a video um, of our residential life program. So it's a three minute video. It will give you a glimpse of what it's like to live on our campus in the dorms. So I'll start that now. It gives me a sense of fulfillment knowing that kids end up seeing this place as home. We are coming through on the promise that we make to these families and students. We took care of this kid in all facets of their life. The most important thing that all parents want is for the children to be happy, to be safe, to feel supported. When a family makes the decision to send their child to the other side of the world, we know that's a tremendous sacrifice. And there's a tremendous amount of trust that we will take care of their son or daughter. And we take that trust very, very seriously. It's a critical time for kids in their life. Not only are they under the pressures of having to do well academically, there also comes social pressure with trying to figure out who they are and do they fit in and do they have the right friends. Our staff helps to support them with their life in the dormitory. Kids have the chance every weekend to go shopping, to go out to dinner. We plan socials every weekend so kids have a chance to get together and become familiar with Southern Maine and New England. I think the other great thing that we're able to provide to kids is academic support. All of our dorm staff members are also teachers at Thornton Academy. And so if we have a student who might be struggling with math homework, they could go see the dorm staff member who is a math teacher. It goes beyond just that classroom. It's that you want to know that your student their needs are being met in the classroom, socially, with clubs or sports that they might be doing. I would challenge any family that is looking at other schools, I would challenge them to find a school community that's going to offer the home environment in the dorm like we do. The care that we provide our students, the support, the mentorship, I just think it's second to none. It is a family dynamic at Thornton Academy. 
all of our faculty who live in the dormitories and supervise and support the students are uh, veteran teachers. Many of them are family members themselves. And they've made this decision voluntarily to be part of this boarding program. It's more than, and than just teaching. It's 24 seven. And their first responsibility is to parent. With the students here at Thornton Academy, I try to function as best I can as if they were my own child um, and care for them in that way. If kids need support, I would support them like they were my own. If they are doing something which means that they might deserve a consequence, then I would treat them like my own. If, if our kids are participating in sports, if they're in a play or a musical, myself and the other staff members, we go and we, we are there cheering for them or applauding them um, like we're their parents. I understand how much trust it takes for a parent to send their student so far away. And as a parent myself, I would want my child to be taken care of the way that we take care of kids here at Florida. Okay, so that's a little glimpse into life at Thornton Academy, just again with our residential life program um, being so strong. Um, so a little bit more, one, th one thing that we say at Thornton Academy is that you, you come here so that you can be who you are and become who you want to be. So being such a large school um, with um, 1,600 students, we have over 200 different classes um, so of those 200, we have 34 art classes. Uh, we have 26 AP classes. So those AP classes are college level classes taught at the high school. Um, over 40 honors classes, um, seven different languages. Um, so for anyone, if we have any um, friends from Italy on the call right now, um, we do have Latin and Greek. We also have German, uh, French, Spanish, Chinese, and Arabic. Um, and we also have ELL, so for anyone needing a little bit of extra support in their English, we do have a, a full program for that. Um, so I know some of you may be interested in athletics, and actually Thornton Academy is ranked in the top 2% of high schools in the entire U.S. for sports. So we have 57 different sports teams. Um, we have a level for everyone. So whether you're, um, you know, hoping to possibly play Division I athletics at a U.S. university, we have seven students this year who are, who are graduating and going to do that. Um, or if you're new to a sport, you wanna try, maybe you're an athlete, but you wanna try a new sport, we have a level for you also. Um, about 72% of our students participate in sports or clubs. So school starts at 8.30 in the morning, ends at 2.45, but for our students, it never ends at 2.45. Classes end at 2.45, but then you have practice or a club meeting every day after school from about 3 to 4.30 or 5. Um, we have, in the last 50 years, um, 56 state championships. Um, and this year alone, we have three and our boys tennis team, our boys lacrosse team, and um, gosh, there's one more team who is about to uh, possibly win the state championship this uh, spring. So um, all of our international students participate in the sports. Um, they are given, you guys are all given equal opportunity for um, you know, participating in a varsity level sports, which is the highest level. Um, oh, so I mentioned some of these, but what you can see here, and I'll make this bigger. Um, so we have three sports seasons, like every other school in the US. We have the fall season, winter season, spring season. Um, for fall sports, you see our list there. Um, and if you are planning to try out for a varsity level, which is again, the highest level, um, then you will actually arrive on campus about 10 days early so that you can participate with all of the other local students um, for the tryout season or tryout period. So that would be cheering, cross country running, girls field hockey, American football for boys, golf, boys and girls, soccer, boys and girls, and girls volleyball. Those are the fall sports. Um, again, you would arrive about 10 days early and we help you, we coordinate that for your I-20, for your visa. So everything is all set for you to come on time. Then you can see the winter sports and how those are divided up um, and then the spring sports. So I, I would say the biggest sports at Thornton Academy are definitely American football. So we were um, runner up this year 
actually, no, we won state championships this year. Um, boys basketball also was the runner up this year. Um, ice hockey team as well. Um, so that's boys and girls ice hockey that we have. Um, and then our boys baseball team, our tennis team and our lacrosse team for our spring sports are some of our top ones. So I think one of the biggest differences that you'll find, um, and I was, I myself, I was a swimmer all through high school and through college. Um, I even studied abroad in Germany and Austria when I was in high school and college and was still able to keep up my athletics. Um, so we really value um, students kind of interrupting their high school careers to come over here and play with us. Um, so varsity, yes, I mentioned varsity athletics arrive early. And you will have a practice or game almost every day after school and on some weekends. So this is going to be a source of community for you. And it's a way that you're going to integrate into our, into our system. So I have another short video. It's like a one minute little kind of clip um, to give you a feel of, of, a, of, a football, of a football game that happens in the fall. So um, whether you're interested in playing American football or going to American football games to like really get that high school experience. Um, this will give you an idea of what it's like. I know how you can respond. When do I give you a one bottle check me, fellas? Let's go! When they hear that the thing goes bang, scoot it, scoot it, bang, do my ones or do a gang, jump up cross or jump up bang. They run when they hear that the thing goes bang, scoot it, scoot it, bang, do my ones or do a gang, jump up cross or jump up bang. It's not guaranteed. We have to earn that. You know, we didn't get hit by chance, and I, I don't, we're gonna go out and play our hearts out. All these people outside the locker room saying we're in trouble. Every other three, five, two, three, four. I say great. Another great challenge. Plus my nose, my legs are moving. Used to keep moving, booty. I spin the hoop till I put the hoozy, put the hoozy. We love these. Um, so football football games are very well attended at Thornton and we always say um, our you know our students really get the the full um, classic typical high school experience um, at Thornton Academy so and am I frozen yes Steve so just uh, not in the best way. Today. I am so sorry. It was only after the video. Right. Um, um, okay. Let me hold on just a second. Still frozen. Still frozen. Okay. That is not the best view either. I am so sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, so that's that is all of the videos that we have uh, for us. But I I did want to. Um, there's a, there was a little more to the presentation, and. Um, Essentially, I was going to give you a bit of a day in the life um, of our students. Um, let me see here if I can share my screen. Okay, can you guys see this? My presentation? Yes, we yes. do. Yes, very okay, good. Okay, excellent. Okay, we'll, we'll do this instead then. Um, so, this is a, basically a daily schedule for your life at Thornton Academy when you're living in the dorms or even if you're living in a homestay. So essentially classes are from 8.30 to 2.45. After school, sports and clubs happen after that. Then um, dinner from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, and then study hours from 7.30 to 9.30 and lights out around 10.30. And that, that shifts to 11.30 on the weekends. Um, then weekends at Thornton Academy, every Friday, we send a schedule with all of the, the activities happening over the weekend that are specifically for our boarding students. And our homestay students are allowed to participate in these activities too. So on Friday morning, you'll get an email that has all of this information and you will be able to go and sign up for certain events. So whether it's, um, you know, we, we have a ski trip every single weekend in the winter because we're 90 minutes from um, from the ski resorts, um, we're five minutes from the beach. 
Um, and so we go to the beach quite often. Um, and then again, 90 minutes from Boston. So we go to Boston quite a bit. So you can sign up for one thing. You can sign up for 10 things. You can create your own schedule and um, see new friends. Um, it's totally up to you. We do also have a summer program. Uh, so if the full academic year or a semester are not an option for you, we have a four week program and a two week program. And basically you take classes in the morning and you do activities in the afternoon and you, you live in our dorms. So anyone interested in specific sport, the, the, this is all of the Instagram handles um, for a bunch of our teams. So the top has our, a bunch of girls teams, the bottom has a bunch of boys teams. So if you're interested in following our, in some of our, in, our teams on Instagram, um, feel free to take note of these. I can also um, possibly copy and paste and put these in the chat. Um, our, our overall, um, it's Thornton Academy Trojans, if you wanna just follow um, Thornton Academy in general. Um, and other than that, happy to take some questions. Thank you very much, Mackenzie. Sure. Any questions? Yes, we have a question. Um, no, I'm sorry. That's your that's your message on the chat. Oh, sorry. No worries, no worries. It's just uh, on the button. Let's see. Any any questions? Any general questions from Mackenzie for for the previous presentations? You may have. Mackenzie, um, do you have a have an about number of how many uh, international students you have at the school? I'm not sure if you said that, but mm -hmm. just if I missed it. Yeah, no, I don't know if I did mention that. So at Thornton Academy, we have about 180 um, international students um, from this year from 29 different countries. So I think we might have, so I know we, we have some Finnish, actually this year, no, no, no Finnish. We have Norwegian, um, Danish, um, Swedish, Italian, German. Um, so we have a good mix of students from all over the, right. the, the globe. So about 10% of the student population. Roughly 10%, yep. Yeah, yep. very good, very good. Yeah. Because I think the, um, at least in Finland, I think the uh, boarding school market is emerging. It's not mm -hmm. huge at the moment, but I think more and more people are going to direct towards boarding school the coming years. It's yeah, an and what we're finding is, um, yeah, and what we like to remind students of is, um, you know, a boarding school in the US is not necessary, like we don't even have uniforms at Thornton Academy. Um, it is, it, it is, it's a classic, like if you've watched the movies, um, whether it's high school musical or something like that, that's the feel you get at Thornton Academy. It's, it's very much not a reform type of school. Um, and we do have significant financial aid available um, and, and scholarships. So, and it looks like Julie wrote, I cannot see when you write in the chat. Oh, oh. Oh, because that's the, the messages they're going to hosts and panelists. So is it possible if you don't open the message up for, for all the attendees? Let's okay. see. Or maybe just write the, write the uh, text again and then just okay no actually you know what i think it's a different question she wants to know she wants julie it looks like you want to know um what the school was called with good soccer yeah yes so troy is it uh, let's see i can also i can also uh let let me do that yeah okay for to everyone julie are you able to see the uh name of the school now it should work Yes, let, let me just copy and paste the, your message, Mackenzie, also here. Okay. There we go. This is from Mackenzie from Thornton Academy. Should, should be going to everyone. Very good, very good. Do we have any, any other questions? All clear. Okay, if not, then I think we are ready to wrap up for tonight. Thank you again, um, attendees. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, visitors present, presenting. Very much uh, 
appreciate it, valuable information uh, from the schools. And um, thank you from here in Helsinki. And um, whenever you are ready to start planning on your uh, exchange here, whatever it may be, here's the uh, contact information for your possible local office. So please uh, get the name down here and uh, get in contact with the local office. We are very, very happy to help you, whatever you may have in mind. Uh, let's plan together and uh, make it happen, whichever school it may be for you. Thank you very much and uh, have a good, good evening. Okay, thank you, Erno. That was great. Very good. Are we done? Yep, I think that's it. Fantastic. Okay. That's nice it. You have, a, you have a good night, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch. Okay, super. Thank okay. you. Take care. Cheers. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye bye.